Hi, my name is Sydney Schultz. I'm going to be doing my presentation um, comparing obesity rates in France and the United States. So the World Health Organization has labeled the escalating global epidemic of obesity and overweight as globesity. Um, according to WHO, obesity is one of today's most visible yet most neglected um, public health problems. Um, so just to define obesity, um, according to the World Health Organization, um, obesity and overweight is abnormal or excessive fat accumulated um, that may impair health. Uh, they use BMI to measure, um, to classify obesity and overweight. And um, what is considered obese and overweight? Um, overweight is a BMI greater than or equal to 25. Obesity is BMI greater than or equal to 30. So what causes obesity? Basically, it all comes down to energy imbalance, an imbalance of calories in and calories out. Um, and in today's society, there has been an increase in energy-dense foods that are high in fat, so we're eating more and we're doing less. So we're expending less calories due to an increasingly sedentary nature in our society. Uh, so why is obesity bad? Um, well, there's common health consequences that come along with overweight and obesity. And they include, uh, well, the main side effect is cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer in America. Um, and that includes heart disease, stroke, hypertension, uh, there's a few others. And then there's metabolic syndrome, such as diabetes, and all, as well as cancers. Um, so these are statistics on obesity in the United States, which were pretty shocking. 39.8% uh, of U.S. adults aged 20 and over are obese. 71.6% of U.S. adults aged 20 and over are overweight. 20.6% uh, of U.S. adolescents aged 12 to 19 are obese. 18.4% of U.S. children aged 6 to 11 are obese. 13.9% of U.S. children uh, between the ages of 2 and 5 are obese. And all of this information came from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, and these were just some alarming um, statistics that I found in one of the research articles that I found very shocking and interesting. Um, the number one, the number of obese children in the United States has tripled from 1970 to 2000. 32% uh, of children are considered overweight and 18% are considered obese. And this is the most shock value worthy one. The current generation of children will be the first in history to have a shorter lifespan than the previous generation. So now looking at obesity in France, um, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, um, Obesity rates in France are among the lowest in all of the collected data in the OECD, um, but have uh, been increasing steadily, which is a global trend. Uh, one in ten people is obese in France, which is comparatively a lot lower than the statistics we saw for America. Um, about 40% of people are overweight and that includes obese um, and I think for America it was about like 70 percent of people aged 20 and over were obese. Um, another thing which is um, comparatively different to the United States, obesity rates are relatively low among children in France. 
um, and they have not been growing over the past 20 years. Um, and the childhood obesity rates are projected to stay pretty low. Um, and I'm going to talk about why. Uh, this was a quote from one of the articles that I read. I am a fat kid. I have a fat mom and dad, but I will die first. This was, this quote stuck out to me um, because in America's society today, this is the cold reality. Um, and I think um, it's something like hearing this. If hearing this doesn't make you want to like see a change, then I don't know what will. Um, so these are statistics related to childhood obesity. Um, children by the age of 10, 60% of children who are overweight will have at least one biochemical or clinical cardiovascular risk factor. 25% are, are uh, prone to having more than two. Children that are overweight in the kindergarten are responsible for over half of the children that are overweight or obese between the ages of 5 and 14. This means that if um, a child is obese from a young age, that they are more likely to stay obese. Um, and 70% of obese adolescents will become obese adults. And again, just reiterating, if a child if a child is obese, they are more likely to stay obese. Um, the fight against obesity and for lifelong health and wellness begins in childhood. Um, and from the last statistics, this is clearly evident to decrease rates of obesity, we need to stop it while they're young so that they're not more likely to be obese when they're older. Um, so another comparative look that I took at France in America to kind of find out some of the different factors that lead to uh, childhood obesity is the school lunches. Now in America, here, I uh, put an image of what I would think a typical American's public school lunch would look like. Maybe not so much like a donut, but... Um, so, school lunches um, in American public schools are um, standardized by the government. Um, they have to meet the Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition standards um, that are published. And I think the latest one in 2012 kind of set the standards um, as far as the nutrients that children are receiving. And um, it's kind of, they can, there's kind of loopholes like, for example, pizza, the tomato sauce in pizza counts as a vegetable in some cases. And, like, the milk, the chocolate milk counts as, like, the calcium in the dairy. Um, and school, uh, children who eat school lunches show a higher rate of overweight and obesity compared to children who home prepare meals. And now... A French school lunch, much more appetizing, a lot more color. Um, there are no national school lunch programs in France. They are funded by uh, local, um, locally sourced uh, food producers. Um, and I thought this was interesting. The French don't spend much more than the U.S. does, yet French kids on average eat better than American children do. So a critique to uh, American school lunches is that the food, if we were to serve healthier food, it would be too expensive. 
However, um, it's interesting that the French don't spend much more than we do and are able to provide meals with fresh ingredients, fruits, vegetables, bread. Um, and I actually, I read a book by author Karen Le Bion. She um, is an American born woman who married a French man and um, moved to France. And um, she wrote a book on how differently the French eat than compared to in America. And um, if you go to the next slide. So I got this image from her blog. Um, she emphasizes how in France eating is viewed differently than it is in America. It's more of they, they value cooking and they value eating. It's like a time where in their culture is like spent with family and it's just a more valued activity overall. Whereas in America where society is so fast paced you know, we got to eat whatever we can get in the fast amount of time that's going to fill us up. So, something, um, and they value fresh ingredients. They get it from locally sourced farmers. Whereas in America, you see this fruit has probably been sitting, soaking in a can of sugar for who knows how long. So, it's really important that, you know, we eat fresh produce and... That's really the main difference between these two school lunches is the uh, freshness of the food. Um, so, like I was saying, I think a possible solution for America to maybe prevent childhood obesity at least, because um, like I said, I think to target the obesity epidemic, we need to start in childhood. And that we really need to reform the school lunch system. And we can do that by providing fresh fruits and vegetables, um, promote, promoting school partnerships with local farmers um, who specialize in natural foods instead of these partnerships with big businesses who uh, are, the foods are completely processed and like food byproduct really. Um, and maybe even promote nutrition and wellness through school nurses to educate the students and the parents and develop school wellness policies to assist the children in their food decisions. I think it's really about educating the children on why nutrition is important, why eating is important. Maybe shift our thinking about eating and cooking to more of a French way. That's it. Thank you.